all right how's everybody doing welcome back and in this video we're gonna talk about pressure drop in reactors up to this point we've been neglecting pressure drop in our uh, in our design of reactors whenever we saw pressure drop boop assume isobaric now we're gonna challenge that assumption all right things are gonna get more interesting so let's see so on the left side as you can see on the left side i have my plug flow reactor now plug flow reactors are essentially tubular reactors they're tubes we have tubes in which we have unit which in which we have plug flow so flat velocity profile okay and on the right side we have packed bed reactors now the packing here all right the packing as you can see let me highlight that in green in a different color the packing is usually made out of the packing is usually consists of catalysts okay catalyst uh, supported on some material all right catalysts are usually spherical some are um, non-spherical but usually like uh, you make a packing out of catalysts and um, most catalytic reactions are either carried out in packed bed reactors or fluidized bed reactors so for packed beds for packed bed reactors pressure drop is critical pressure drop is um, critical in determining the size of your of your reactor especially and I'm emphasizing that this, this is very important in the case of gas phase reactions, all right? So, um, like I said, pressure, tr pressure drop is important for sizing gas phase um, reactions that are being carried out in gas phase, okay? So, why gas phase, all right? Why, why, why is gas phase getting so much attention? Why, what makes gas phase so important? Well, we do know that the volumetric flow rate, the volumetric flow rate, is gonna the volumetric flow rate depends on pressure depends on pressure okay since we have a gas phase we're no long we're no longer assuming incompressible all right at high pressure we're gonna have a smaller volumetric flow rate at low pressure our gases will be allowed to expand and we're gonna have a higher volumetric flow rate all right now this is just, um just simple thermodynamics just simple thermodynamics gas phase reactions let's uh, let's uh, explore let's uh deep dive into gas phase reactions so first off we have our exit molar flow rate exit molar flow rate and at the bottom we have at the bottom we have exit volumetric flow rate and those two combine to give us the exit concentration of species a all right now we know the exit molar flow rate can be written as inlet molar flow rate times one minus the conversion but let's uh, let's talk about let's talk about exit molar flow rate for a second okay and we're going to start off our discussion by assuming ideal gas all right for ideal gases oh sorry sorry uh, that's not what i meant to write my bad uh assuming ideal gas at both inlet and outlet conditions at inlet we're gonna have inlet pressure times inlet flow rate is equal to the inlet total molar flow rate t represents total molar flow rate times r ideal gas constant times inlet temperature at the exit let's use a different color for exit we're gonna have exit pressure times exit volumetric flow rate times exit total molar flow rate ideal gas constant remains the same and exit temperature now let's see what happens if we combine these two equations. Let's see what happens if you get V over V naught. You'll see if you just follow the algebra, you'll get, I'm going to use a different color, Ft over Ft naught. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, P naught over P. Okay. And you get T over T naught okay so as you can see the exit the exit volumetric flow rate depends on the exit total molar flow rate the exit total molar flow rate it also depends on the exit pressure and it also depends on the exit temperature and if you assume, if you simplify this analysis, if you simplify this analysis by assuming isothermal, 
assuming isothermal then that simply means then that just gets rid of the last term t over t naught becomes equal to one if you assume isothermal because the inlet temperature is equal to the outlet temperature and that gives you the exit volumetric flow rate as inlet volumetric flow rate times the ratio of exit and inlet total moles times the ratio of inlet and exit pressure all right and this right here this is usually captured if you have been reading chapter four of Fogler. this is usually captured as one plus epsilon x okay and p naught over p is just gonna hang hang around with us for the for the time being all right all right and for this one all right if you have any qu questions about it please read um chapter four of fogler fifth edition chapter four of fogler fifth edition the one on stoichiometry the one on stoichiometry specifically gas phase stoichiometry all right now if i combine this all right using this relationship oops my bad if i use this relationship and combine it with my original expression for exit concentration the original expression was exit molar flow rate divided by exit volumetric flow rate well now i know that the exit molar flow rate is going to be exit concentration the exit concentration is going to be exit molar flow rate the expression for that i got it and for v or the volumetric flow rate i just got this expression right here so i'm going to use that now all right and i'm going to get v times v naught times one plus epsilon x and the uh the pressure the ratio this term right here i get p over p naught right yeah that's good and combining combining f a naught over v naught that's just equal to my inlet concentration so now I, so now i have my exit concentration as inlet concentration times 1 minus s x over 1 plus epsilon x p over p naught now p over p naught this is going to be encountered frequently so p over p naught is going to be combined to give a new parameter called lowercase p lowercase p okay the pressure ratio okay this is just the ratio ratio of exit to inlet pressure nothing fancy All right and this is another another variable that we're going to need an equation for okay so just to give you just to close the loop ca becomes ca naught times 1 minus x over 1 plus epsilon x times lowercase p and this is for this is the exit concentration let let me uh, make it more specific this right here is the exit concentration in gas phase exit concentration of species a in gas phase of course okay in gas phase gas phase is important or variable pressure okay this expression accounts for the uh, variation in inlet and outlet pressure by the uh, by the last term here okay this term the, the the variation in pressure is accounted by lowercase p and lowercase p is just it's just exit pressure divided by inlet pressure oops all right so this is the y right now let's zoom out a bit so far we've developed the expression okay we've gone through the reasoning of why we need to account for pressure drop why the variation in pressure drop is going to become important for gas phase reactions all right it's the uh, and in the next video we're going to talk about the how okay how do we account for it because we need an equation now we need an equation that models that gives us p this lowercase p as a function of the conversion of species a okay this is what we need and this is going to be our segue into the next video in which we're going to talk about the famous argon equation all right the famous argon equation the uh 
All right, the only equation, the best, the only equation I know that um, deals with pressure drops in packed beds. Credit, credit goes to this, um, the Turkish engineer, uh, Ergon, a very smart guy, a lot smarter than a lot smarter than you and I, of course. So yeah, that's gonna be our segue into the next video, and thanks for sticking around. All right.